My dear sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ, I'm sure you have heard this little incident which makes my point. There was a little a principal, Mr. Johnson, called up this little boy at home. And when the boy, we called up home, and the little boy picked up the phone. And the little boy the, said yes. And the principal said, son, this is Mr. Johnson, the principal. The boy said, yes, I know. So he said, can I speak to your dad? And he said, no. He said, OK, then can I speak to your mom? No. Is there anyone that I can speak to at home? He, little boy said, yes. I mean, sorry, there's a policeman, but he's busy. And so the uh, principal said, policeman? What is the policeman doing in your home? He's talking to the fire brigade man. So the principal said, excuse me, there's a fire? Was there a fire in your house? Your parents are talking to the policeman, and they're talking to the fire brigade man. So is there a fire in your house? And little boy said, no. Then what are they all doing in your house? And little boy quietly whispered and giggled, they're looking for me, and I'm hiding. My dear sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ, I remember seeing a story like this actually, a little boy hiding in the tree and the whole family searching for him in the house and the village and so on. However, this story brings up something very clear, that unless we come out of our places and our contentment, we are not going to find the Lord. The line that strikes me today is that the people, all of Judea and Jerusalem, they came out and went to the river Jordan. And if you know, if you look at the map tonight or whatever, Jerusalem and the river Jordan are quite far apart. And so these people came out of their comfort zone because they wanted to know the word of God. My dear sisters and brothers, God cannot do anything with us unless you and I open ourselves to God. God has made us in his own image and likeness. Very often people say, how can this evil exist? No, you have chosen this in your way, not maybe you, but the surroundings and so on. You have chosen this because God is not going to interfere with your intelligence. He has respected you, he's made you in his own image and likeness. That means he's given you the intelligence that he has, and therefore he's not going to take it away from you. You know, when I was a young boy, I mean, I don't play cards for the simple reason my dad and my mom were experts on rummy. They knew which card fell, etc. All right, in those days, there was no TV and so on. So evenings, both of them played cards, made paper flowers, etc., etc. And so I remember once playing cards with all my cousins, and my dad was standing behind me and watching me. And he kept on saying, why did you throw that card out? Don't you know he's picking up that? After two, three minutes, I took the whole hand of cards, said, take, you play. Okay? That's what God doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to interfere in the intelligence he has given us. I've given you intelligence, I've given you wisdom, I've given you knowledge, and so on. And it's up to us, my dear sisters and brothers, to use our intelligence. And that is why there may be evil in the world. Take, for example, why would the Chinese eat bats? I don't know if that's the cause of COVID, but why would the Chinese eat bats? Why would they eat animals? You know, we talk so much about environment and so on. So if you really go down, deep down, there has to be reason for the cause of evil, and the basic cause is greed. Look at Goa. You can see balconies. My sister sent me photographs. The whole front balcony got black dust. The plants have got black dust. Why? Does Goa require cold? No. The cold is going to pass from one place to another. We are talking about conserving, I mean, climate change and no fossil fuel and so on. And big talks we have at big seminars and all in the world. And Goa, which got nothing to do with, is going to be the the, the pass that pa where the coal will pass from one state to another. Beaches in Goa are full of coal, and it's sad because Goa depends on tourism. Now, whose problem is that? One man, Adnani, who's trying to spoil the beaches and the famous coral barrier 
in Australia because of coal. Now, do we require it? Why is in the world making standing up against this thing, against fossil fuel? Somebody is benefiting, somebody. It's always time for you scratch my back, I scratch your back, so we permit it. And this is just one example. So coming back to what I'm saying is, God is calling you and me out into the desert, into an experience of emptying ourselves. And when I look at this whole lockdown and so on and reflecting in these last eight months, I look at what happened in the Bible. The Bible is the best teacher. And you look at Noah. Why did God tell Noah, get into an ark and chose his family? Because God was going to save them because the rest of the world had become so corrupt. Right from Cain, you find if you make a tabulation, you'll see the crime increasing and increasing and murder increasing to such an extent that one of Cain's great-grandchildren, Lamech, says, so what if I murder? God forgave Cain seven times. But with me, God's going to forgive me 70 times seven. That's the way Jesus uses that word 70 times from the book of Genesis, Lamech. And Lamech is so proud that I can do what I want and still be forgiven. And that's why God says, fine, there is a time to be purified. And so this 40 days is a time of purification. And they come out to a whole new world. Everybody's talking about new, a whole new world order. Second reading spoke about a new world order of a new heaven and a new earth. And then you go on in every part of history. Right from then, you come into Egypt. Egypt, the people went into the desert 40 years. In that 40 years, they were purified. So much so that the ones who joined into the, into the desert experience never came out of it. They died in those 40 years. And throughout that 40 years, they still wanted to hold to the past, the flesh pots of Egypt, the golden calf, the snake worship, and God had to tell them, you're a stiff-necked people. So much so when they crossed into the promised land, into a new land, not even Moses crossed it. Only Joshua, Caleb, and the new generation, that they would not carry the past with them. And then you carry on in the, when you come to Israel, and after a few years, the people of Israel begin to worship strange gods, weird gods, and marry and so on, and worship Baal and Ashret. And then you have Solomon of all, the wisest of all kings, whose first wife was an Egyptian. And God gets so angry and says, how could you do this? I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Solomon, in all his wisdom, still marries other women to please the neighboring countries, to be politically correct. And that's the fall of Israel to the point of exile. In that exile, they learn they have to be a new people, a new order, and they come back. And for us, my dear brothers, the lockdown also shows us that it's time for us to be a new people, a new order. Just like the people in the uh, exile realize they don't require a temple. They can have a relationship with God. Maybe God's teaching us that. In the lockdown, I don't need to come to church, honestly, because the cardinal says the Sunday Mass is still not obligatory. And yet, I'm sitting here and I counted 28 people who have walked in 10 minutes late for Mass. Why did you come? Why did you come? For a ritual? You're not going, you're excused. And this is what I'm asking you, my dear brothers. Can we move into a new world order? Stop holding on to the past. Stop holding on. God is asking you in the season of Advent to move out. Both the readings say that. St. Paul will say from glory to glory. If you are going to do the same thing again and again and again, you haven't grown, you haven't matured. You know, when I see people for funerals, not that I have anything against them, but there's a beautiful prayer, and that prayer says about the person who is lying dead in the coffin, thank you for using this person to show your fatherly care for each one of us. That person had the duty to show God's love, 
the presence of God, the Father, Jesus and Son, the Holy Spirit to other people around. And I look at that person and I make an extra prayer. That's why we say forgive their sins, they receive Eucharist, etc. And Lord, now the last prayer is in your mercy. Relieve whatever sufferings and sins he may have. My dear sisters and brothers, in this lockdown we have had 96 funerals. Just in this eight months, 96 funerals. That's about three a week. And every time we go, people say, Father, you don't feel upset. Of course we do. But my fear is, was the person who was dying ready to go? Has that person made a difference in this life to other people? You know, last night I was watching this movie on Saddam Hussein. And I can see the sinfulness of that man because of his greed. He ruined his own daughter's marriages. And the last line is the daughter sends a lawyer to, for him to save his life. And her last line, because her biography, she says, at least God would know I forgave him. And that line extremely touched me. At least God will know I forgave him. My dear sisters and brothers, here we have today John the Baptist, a very holy man, a very simple man, a man who was a man of sincerity and a man of authenticity, a man who did not go with the big people and try to be hobnobbing with the well-to-do. Even Herod said, I want to meet this man. But Herod did not have the guts to meet that man because John the Baptist would tell him a few home truths. But he would talk big, just to be pop. You know, all of us talk like oh, the bandwagon kind of thing. We talk about things. That's what Herod did. I'd like to meet this man. But honestly, he didn't. My dear sisters and brothers, this is what John the Baptist was. He'd be sincere, straightforward, and tell you a spade, a spade. You know, many of you must have already know the story of where the word sincere comes from. It comes from those Italian Roman statues way back in the Roman Empire. When they built these beautiful statues of various goddesses and kept them in their gardens for protection, like how we keep statue of Our Lady or something like that, for protection. But when they were chipping those statues, because marble is a very delicate material, can you imagine when they've shaped the whole statue and they go to make the nose, the Roman nose, the aquiline nose, chipping, and if one piece fell, you mean they had to make the whole statue again. So what did these Roman people do? I think the word rogue comes from Romans. These Roman people would melt wax, ordinary wax, and apply it and mix it up with that marble and you wouldn't know. And so when people bought these statues, they bought these beautiful statues of goddess of Diana and so on, and they put it in their gardens. And when the summer came in, Diana was no more Diana, she was something else because the wax melted. Can you imagine an aquiline nose, now a crooked nose, a straight-eyed person, a cockeyed person and all these kind of things? Can you imagine? And so when they went to buy the statue, they told them, we want a guarantee. That's where the warranty and guarantees come from. We want a statue sin sere, sin without sere wax, without wax. And that's where the word sins, words, wax, sincere comes from. Look at our lives. The good I want to do, I don't do, St. Paul says. But the bad I don't want to do, I do. Sincere. How I say nice things in front of people, and then behind their backs, you criticize them. This is not John the Baptist. John the Baptist was sincere, authentic, a very prayerful man. At the moment, right now, I'm doing a retreat from with Father Kantam. Mela. He was the uh, spiritual director of Pope John Paul II. And yesterday was the topic on joy and love in keeping with the season of Advent. And he said, if you want joy and love, you've got to have an experience of God. That is the foundation, the experience of God. And if you have to have an experience of God, you have to empty yourself of all your attentions and begin a process of moving up. Like St. Paul says, from glory to glory. If you're not prepared to do that, you're not going to find joy because the real source of joy comes from love. And the real source of love comes from when you encounter God.
All the other loves will point towards that real love, but the real love is Jesus Christ.